In this video, is a combination of quick demonstration and quick feature tour. The video covers important features and concepts introduced in the previous slides. Creating a virtual service by recording live traffic. Executing transactions against a virtual service. Creating a virtual service with request and response pair files. Creating a virtual service with a WSDL. And editing and maintaining virtual service files. There are many ways to create a virtual service with CA service virtualization. One of the common methods is to record and capture HTTP traffic using the VS Recorder in the Dev Test Portal. In this example we will capture traffic from the Forward Cars application. We will capture transactions from the Forward Cars search page. The data used to populate this page is called from the inventory component of the Cars application. The application is hosted on the app server machine, and the inventory component resides in its own container. After capturing the transactions, we will shut down the container, and use the virtual service in its place. Now we will return to the end user machine, DT client, and configure the recorder to capture the transactions using the HTTP transport protocol. On the VS Recorder configuration screen, is a graphical representation of how the live traffic is captured. The client, the Forward Cars website, will be configured to send traffic to the VS Recorder, hosted on the DT server machine, on port 8001. The VS Recorder will capture the traffic, then send the request to the Forward Cars application on app server, port 7000. The Cars application will process the request, and send the response to the recorder. The recorder will capture the response, then send it to the client. Next, we will configure the car's ESB to send traffic to the VS recorder on DT server, port 8001. Now we can start the recorder and begin capturing transactions. After capturing the data for three cars, the VS Recorder has enough information to analyze the transactions, create magic strings, and parameterize request information in order to supply data for the remaining cars, even though they were not accessed during the recording. Before we stop the recording, we can check the list of captured transactions. The rest calls are displayed, and you can see the specific VIN numbers in the URIs. Everything looks good, so we can stop the recording. Forward Cars uses REST, so we will select the REST data protocol. The data protocol analyzes the transactions and creates URI rules. Notice some URIs now have parameters instead of hard-coded values. This provides flexibility in the virtual service. For example, because this URI is parameterized and not hard-coded to a specific VIN number, the virtual service is not limited to requests for specific VIN values. Next, we can save and deploy the virtual service to the VSE. On the VSE dashboard, in the dev test portal, we can see the virtual service is running. The VSE is hosted on DT server, and the virtual service is communicating over port 8001. The forward car's ESB is still configured to DT server 8001. Because the recorder is no longer running, we can keep this configuration and now communicate with the running virtual service. Now we can shut down the inventory container to validate we are in fact hitting the virtual service. Returning to forward cars, we will navigate to the search page, but this time, the data will come from the virtual service and not the live inventory component. The search page loads properly, calling the data from the virtual service. When we captured transactions, we used the first three cars at the top of the page. First, we will look at a car from that set of transactions. Notice the car details contain the correct information for the Audi. Also note the VIN, ending in 9014. Now we will look at a car that was not a part of the three transactions captured by the recorder. The first thing to note, is we clicked on a BMW, but the data is still from the Audi. This is because we did not capture every car on the page, 
but by using parameters in the URI rules, the virtual service will provide data for any car on the page, although it may not be exact. In many cases, the data doesn't have to be exact, it just has to be there, and that is enough to keep developing and testing. But in cases where the data does need to be more meaningful, magic strings can be used. Notice the VIN. It ends in 8774, and the other VIN ends in 9014. The virtual service used a magic string to respond with the same VIN that was in the request, in order to provide specific, meaningful data. The flexibility and strictness of how a virtual service responds, can be configured to meet the needs of the application data requirements. Returning to the VSE dashboard, we can see 14 transactions passed through the virtual service. Next, we'll stop the virtual service and take it offline. Now that the virtual service is offline, when we attempt to load the search page, the page is empty, because there is no data to display. In addition to the dev test portal, the recorder in dev test workstation provides over a dozen different types of transport protocols to use for recording live traffic, covering nearly every virtualization need. When a live service is unavailable, a virtual service can be created in the dev test portal, with request and response pair files. One file contains the request payload, and the other file contains the response payload. There can be multiple requests, and requests can also have multiple responses. The files are uploaded to the dev test portal and used to create the virtual service. A WSDL URL or file can also be used to create a virtual service in the dev test portal. The WSDL is uploaded then parsed, and the operations listed. You can select which operations to virtualize, and create the virtual service with those operations. DevTest Workstation also provides several additional ways, to create a virtual service when a live service is unavailable. Virtual service image files, containing the data and matching criteria for a virtual service, can be edited in the DevTest portal. All the data can be customized and new transactions added using request and response pair files or added using an external data source. Virtual service image files can also be edited in Dev Test Workstation along with the virtual service model file which performs actions such as listening for the requests and applying the data protocols to the payloads. In addition to editing the data, the performance of the virtual service can be edited. When a virtual service is created, the actual performance of the live component is captured and stored in the think time field. To test an application to see how it reacts to different response times, the think time can be adjusted at the transaction level in both dev test workstation and dev test portal, and for the entire virtual service when it is running in the VSE. This can cause the response to become faster or slower than the application is expecting, allowing testers to create specific performance conditions to see how the application behaves. As an application changes, the VSE provides two execution modes to dynamically maintain the data in the virtual service. These learning modes allow transactions to pass through the virtual service to the live component, then compare the responses in the virtual service to the responses from the live component. When changes are found, the VSE can update the virtual service automatically.